everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and it's time for an update vlog. <laughs> I haven't done an update vlog in forever. Uh, I was on a live stream tonight with Maple Syrup, which was uh, Sin Sin Lim and Daryl Andrews, and um, the guests were myself and Jamie Boucher from G GTS Distribution. We we're talking a little bit about supply chain logistics and a little bit about marketing and gaming. And just some, like, general questions from that. And I always forget, like, I do have this whole, like, crop of information that other people just don't have access to that I forget that I have access to. So, um, it was interesting to talk with them about, like, how to market your game and what makes a good sell sheet and about, uh, reprint numbers and stuff like that, um... So I figured I would come here and do a short vlog of just what I've been gaming with lately and um, invite anyone that has questions to ask them and I will be trying to do a couple more vlogs and then a, a full review of Yentes, uh, Yentes, G-E-N-T-E-S from Spielworks. I can't pronounce it because um, the internet failed me when I was looking for a pronunciation. But, so we were talking a little bit, like, so I work for PSI now, which is in between a publisher and a distributor, there is a collaborator, or whatever they want to call it, where we take your games as a publisher and we get them into distribution, whether that means a hobby store distributor like uh, GTS or ACD or Alliance, or if that means mass market like Amazon, Target, Walmart, those types of things. I specifically work in the hobby chain, which is your local friendly game stores, distributors, and um, that's what I've been doing for the last couple months. Um, I have been taking games information and kind of curating it down and putting it into emails and making sure people have it on time, and that's been the bulk of my job, right? Um, so my last job was as a retailer, specifically buying games into a store and... Um, figuring out how to deal with that whole thing, and that was a, a whole nother ball game. But in the meantime, I kind of lost and found some gaming. Um, so one of the biggest things I've been playing recently was the Arkham Horror LCG. This is outside of my regular wheelhouse. It is a cooperative game where players have a kind of progressive uh, character arc. So everyone starts with a character, mine's named Mark, and you start with your beginning deck and every session gains you some XP to spend and then you enhance your deck with different cards. We as a group have been going through the Carcosa uh, expansion, um, which is I believe in its fourth uh, pack at the moment, and so each round you set up a different scenario part of the Carcosa scenarios and um, this one uh, you go and see a play and it goes kind of poorly <laughs> and uh, as you go through you learn some more about the mythos of that session and of that world you go to different locations you're trying to solve different things and you make some decisions like it'll say uh, do you want to like go kill all the people or do you want to burn this thing down and you kind of make those decisions and write them down on a sheet. And um, so we are into our third uh, session of that. We're just past the third session, and then we're going to the fourth. And so far, we haven't um, had any, like, TPK or anything. So we've, we've always managed to get out and make some experience um, on all of our sessions. And from what I had gained before uh, about the system was that, um, like, Rodney Smith said that he had not won a single scenario of Dunwich in, in the Arkham Horror LCD. And so I was a little worried that we were overpowered or doing it wrong, but the experience of actually, like, discussing of how we're going to get through the different things and how we're going to fight things was worth it for me to still go on and still do it despite us not having any major setbacks. Because I think when you think about a co-op as a whole, you kind of want some setbacks. Um, you want the game to 
punish you or not allow you to advance as easily as you want to or something. And for us, we always got through it. So I, I, I thought that that would make it where it was too easy. But I've been quite enjoying it. Um, it feels a little bit more like an RPG to me than an LCG. Because my previous experience with LCGs was with Netrunner and Doomtown, which are much more traditional card games. I build a deck, you build a deck, we go and we fight. And with the cooperative ones like Lord of the Rings or this Arkham Horror one, it's a very different thing to be fighting the NPC and seeing how well you do against it. So, <sighs> overall, I think the Arkham Horror LCG with the correct party is going to be just fine. Like, it's playing D&D &D or Pathfinder or whatever with the right party is just perfectly fine and wonderful. But I can't imagine playing that with a random group or the group you didn't enjoy that much. Um... I've been playing uh, a little bit of Azul. Azul is a abstract game from Plan B Games that came out very recently. And a lot of people, for some reason or another, were comparing it to Splendor. And I don't think they really compare, even though they're both drafting games. Um, in Azul, you set up drafts around the table in kind of a circle. And if I take all the blue tiles, I take one color of tile off of a lily pad, I push all the other tiles in the middle. And the next person takes some tiles and pushes the rest of them in the middle. And the next person, the next person, the next person. At some point, a, a player can take all the tiles of a color uh, in the middle. And they get one negative point for having done so, but they get all those tiles. Now the trick is that each color of tile you're taking can only fit into one of the lines that you have, and those lines are progressively larger. So you have a, a one piece, a two piece, a three piece, a four piece, and a five piece. So if I put two blue tiles into my four piece, in subsequent rounds I can only put two more blue tiles in there. And that's where as well gets really mean in that um, I can see what you can or can't take, and I can see how many of those tiles you want, and I can put them into situations where you have to take four of that color when you wanted two, and then you only get negative points for the extras. And I thought that was really clever. There's one side of the board that kind of helps you remember where all the colors go, and the scoring is pretty neat. You only score as you're building up rows or columns. Or you can put it on the other side, which is a little more freeform, but you can still only put a, a color, like, one time within a, a row or column. So you have to be really careful not to screw yourself over, which is harder than it sounds. Um, so that's uh, Azul. And I've been playing a lot of Gentus. And then this weekend, I'm hoping to get my first game of Alien Artifacts out but I just want to do a quick recap of um, my week. I should have a uh, BGGCon recap done soon. Um, but I just wanted to say hi and I love you and goodbye. And I'm sorry for yawning. And bye.